made a choice. Well, there you have it, folks. I went ahead and got that DeWalt table saw right here at Lowe's. Lowe's does a 10% military discount, so makes a boot camp worth it. I had several table saw recommendations from you guys in the comments, and I looked at all of them. I mean, the Deltas, Powermatics, all that, but I really just need to be mobile. And I would like to get a more powerful table saw eventually when I get more space, maybe like build a shop or something. But right now I still need to be super mobile and I'm limited on space. Oh, that is perfect. Yeah. Good call. I don't know what was going on. I'm about to make my first cuts on this brand new table saw and I'm pretty freaking excited about it. I'm gonna just get started and start continuing to mill out this lumber for these newel posts and then show you how I'm gonna assemble them. What? You gotta do school. What are you trying to be? What are you going to school for? Julia. <laughs> I have all my big lumber ripped down rough. I'm gonna send it through the planer, get it all to size. And I have a big board that's extra. I got that just in case I screw up. I don't have to drive back all the way to the lumber yard and get more. Now that I got my vertical styles milled out for these newel posts, I need to cut these boards down to about half of what they are now, just cut them right in half. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I push these boards through the router table, I don't want to have to have that big board to work with and throw it off balance. The smaller piece you can work with, especially when it comes to routing a finished piece, the better. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll cut these in half, run them through the router table, and then finally cut them to their right size. So now these are all cut to rough size. Time to send them through the router table. When I run these boards through the router table, I'm looking for the two best sides and I'm gonna put those face down because if you remember from the last video, this is what I'm trying to end up with right here. So these two sides are becoming my outside miter and I want those to be the cleanest, smoothest, best planed sides. One thing I realized while I was routing all these boards is that I made way too many of them because I forgot that two of these posts are gonna be up against a wall, so I don't need a raised panel back there. But better to have more to make a mistake with than not enough and have to redo this whole process and set everything back up. So here are my massively oversized vertical styles that you just saw me make for this raised panel null post. I make everything massively oversized anytime I'm routing just so I can trim it down to its exact length later. That way, usually what I find is that when I'm using the router, the kind of imperfections of the operator error, which is me, is either in the beginning of the, the work piece or at the end. Usually the middle is pretty clean cut, so that's why these are massively oversized. And these will eventually get trimmed down to about 40 inches. I haven't decided yet. That I've got to still figure out. But you can still see it has the, the lumber spray paint or whatever they put on their lumber when they sell it to you. And I'm going to trim both sides for that reason. So I'm going to cut one side, the factory edge off, set up a stop block to 40 inches or whatever I decide, and then cut all of them down to the exact same length using that stop block method but speaking of keeping things larger until i'm ready to cut them down the piece that's going to be in the middle which is this this is that horizontal rail and this is a really miniature version of it as far as how tall it needs to be it needs to be about 11 inches it needs to be about like this so this is one by six poplar that i'm ripping down to about 
uh, well, I'm, I'm ripping it down later to about three and a half inches, but I cut this to about 11 inches and I need to put this same pattern on it to make that groove for this tongue to slide in. If you remember, this goes in here to connect these like that, but this middle piece needs to be much longer because by the time I put the null post cap and then the trim and the handrail on, there's gotta be a lot more than just this little piece right here. But that's why I'm cutting these down to about 11 inches. That's what I found from the design that I wanna do. That's what I need. So I'm gonna, I set up a little stop block here just to rough cut a bunch of these one by sixes to 11 inches. And then I'm gonna route the ingrain on them and then trim them down to what they need, really need to be on the table saw. Here's one of the pieces I've been cutting and I need to push it through end grain. It's gonna have chip out for sure, especially on end grain. One thing I could do is use this little jig that I made that saves it from chipping out, but I really don't have to use this. I'm just gonna push it through free handed because like I was saying, I'm eventually right after this, I'm gonna rip it down to its final width. So whatever chips out on the end, it's not even gonna matter. You can see that chip out. I mean, it wasn't too bad, but I definitely don't want that. But these two ends are gonna get cut and ripped down to the final length, because this right here is perfect. All these corners right here are chipped out, and it doesn't matter, because like I told you earlier, I'm ripping these things down. As you can see, no more chip out. So these look pretty clean now. So now I'm gonna set up the table saw to the measurement that I need and then just run these through, making sure to cut this side off now. So I have a perfect side here, and I'm gonna be left with a perfect piece for the middle. So I just figured out what I need to make these. It's gonna be three and a half. I'm gonna make these three and a half inches. So I'm simply just gonna set up the table saw to three and a half and push these through on all of them. All right, now we have perfection from side to side these things are perfect in theory shouldn't have to adjust the height but I'm going to check with the sample obviously before I run all those boards through that I just made and if something was wrong oh that would be bad I think we all make that mistake early on when we're doing this carpentry stuff we just assume something is set up right and we learn the hard way <laughs> I'm rolling on the bearing and I'm on the fence. That's, that's perfect. That is exactly what I want right there. That is super clean. Perfection, guys. Sometimes I get it right. Now I've got to do it with the real pieces that are going to be for the post. And this is a little more crucial than what I just did because the way that this works, this bit actually cuts like a little 45 detail on the piece. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. But the chip out is really important that I use this and kind of take it easy, make sure I'm really perfect parallel with the fence because this can go really bad. This is just going perfect for me. Look at these little details right there. See how it makes that 45 for me? That little 45? That is exactly, exactly what I need. If you don't have this block 
to help prevent that chip out, this will not work. It'll just blow out. It's happened to me before. It happened to me in the sample in the last video. That's why I made this little jig. But now, when this comes together, I'll show you. I'll grab a piece of scrap. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This right here is one of my vertical styles. And here goes one of the rails. Now, when this slides into it, like that, look at that cope right there, how the bit just copes it out for you. That's exactly what I want. We got it on both sides. And with that, these raised panels are gonna look super precise. That's exactly what we want. So you definitely wanna be using a jig like this, because if I wasn't, these would not be so pretty. And man, are they pretty. Yeah, let me put one of these together and show you what it looks like. I gotta say, that is pretty freaking cool. This idea came together. So there's the post, and this is really rough. I mean, you can see all the links are really different. I think what I'll do for the glue up is just glue like one side at a time. And let me know your thoughts on this. Should I leave these things oversized, glue them up and then cut them to length? I don't know if that would make sense. I don't do a whole lot of glue ups because residential interior trim, I mean, we're not gluing up a whole lot of things, but give me your advice on that. You woodworker guys out there that are definitely more, done more glue ups in your lifetime than I have. And let me know how you would handle this because I could use the help. But dang, there you have it. The 45s on those coping sticks are super tight. So anyways, that's my box newel post. I am super, super happy this came together. And the fact that it's just staying together without clamps on that tight joinery just makes it 10 times better. I'll see you on the next one. Take care.